Okay, so let's get rolling. Uh, I mentioned in Slack yesterday that I would uh, go through the new CS major since uh, some folks uh, have been asking questions about switching over to that, things like that. Um, I know I brought this up once before, but uh, let me just kind of highlight it because uh, there seemed to be some confusion as to how this would impact uh, um, you. So uh, for starters, uh, if you are, well, all of you are under the, uh, the previous program, you can certainly stick with that if you'd prefer. Uh, I'm not sure why you'd want to, <laughs> but you could. Uh, you have not put yourself at a disadvantage uh, at all. Um, you're already right on track with where you would need to be and we're accommodating the class order uh, for your particular group. Um, so uh, just to quickly go through this uh, again, then show you the classes and make sure you know what you should be taking uh, uh, next semester and, and, and so on, so you can have your registrations uh, correct. Uh, the new major has a technology core that everybody takes, no matter which of the concentrations that you pick. Um, so all of you had already taken CSC 150. It's no longer required. It counts as one of your uh, electives, your free elective. So you didn't hurt yourself by taking it, but in hindsight, you would have had the option not to take that class um, had you come in under the new program. So let's call that the one fall guy. Um, but it didn't hurt you and, and it did move you towards your graduation credits because you do have 21 free electives in the new program. Um, so required classes for you are CSC 175 and 200, which you're taking this semester. Um, that's going to be a class that you will, that incoming students will take starting in the fall. So we will be offering both of those classes again in the fall with the idea that you would take three, uh, 250 in the spring. Well, you're taking 250 this coming fall. So that's a one-off class we're offering to make sure that you stay on track. Um, but in the future, 250 won't be offered uh, in the fall anymore. It'll only be offered in the uh, um, uh, spring. Similarly, 300 will be offered in the fall um, uh, traditionally, but we're offering it next spring instead because that's when you're going to need it. Okay, that gets you through the computer programming uh, um, courses in the correct order so you're not disadvantaged. So we've already put into place for the next two semesters, the um, accommodations for your particular group, the students who are currently in 200, slightly out of order relative to the new major, and then you're right back on track, okay? So these are the classes everybody has to take, and most of these classes were classes you have to take under your, uh, your current major anyways. You had to take 200, 250. Um, you did not have to take 325, you had to take 350, you had to take 370, you had to take 410, 420, 430, 460 is a new class, um, 491, um, and now you have to take an internship. Um, realistically, if we get down to the wire and you're looking to graduate and you haven't uh, had your internship yet, we would probably let you swap an additional computer science elective in place of the uh, internship. Um, but in any case, the classes that you're required to take really have not uh, changed. We've removed some electivity in computer science, so the idea of this 460 class being required and the 325 class being required would have constituted the electives you would have taken before anyways. We just now have less choice built into it um, to make sure the individual classes have uh, uh, good numbers in them and can be taught um, more effectively. All right, so again, you're not disadvantaged at all. Um, you're already right on track. Uh, we used to require that you meet the mathematics uh, uh, core requirement through calculus. We removed that, so you no longer have to take calculus. Um, uh, to meet that uh, requirement. We now only require you to take statistics uh, as uh, a math. So that will be um, um, the math you have to take. So we have a reduced math requirement. I would probably encourage you to take more math than that, 
Uh, but if you're adverse to math and you want to focus more on business applications and things like that, um, there's nothing wrong with that. We give you the ability to do that. So now we're suggesting you take more math with some electives rather than being forced to take more math. Um, from there, you pick one of three or one of five concentrations. So we have a concentration in software engineering, which is this is guys equivalent to our current um, computer science major. So if you're currently um, uh, in line to take, uh, if your major is currently computer science instead of information technology, you're effectively a software engineering concentration. These courses should look pretty familiar to you. 450 and 470 were not uh, required before, but they were basically the courses, the elective courses that everybody took if you were in computer science. Um, 490 you already took, 300 you already took. So this is the existing major. Um, we now have a, so you can have a concentration in software engineering or concentration in AI and robotics. And notice that this guy is pretty similar um, to the traditional software engineering major in that they both require that third programming class, uh, which by the way, I recommend regardless of which concentration you take. Uh, and it's not just because I take the class, it's because I'm again gonna really emphasize this idea that computer programming is, the, uh, um, uh, is a power tool that will allow you to go and do a lot of things and make a lot of money out in industry. Uh, so the more programming you can get, the better. And I promise you, this semester has been a uh, semester where you're just getting your feet wet, wet with programming using Python as kind of your playground. Starting next semester, we're going to be using more industry standard tools. Not that Python isn't heavily used in the industry, but we're going to be using languages like Java and C Sharp. Uh, we might mess around with Unity Game Engine some, which uses C Sharp scripting. So we're going to start uh, dabbling in um, various industry standard tools to really emphasize that point that programming is the skill set, the language or the tool doesn't matter. All right, so I foresee us using um, Java with Eclipse next semester, maybe some Android programming with Java, and maybe some Unity game programming in 250 using C Sharp. And you're gonna see how similar those are, yet now you have the ability to write Android apps and you have the ability to write Unity video games. Um, so that skill set, that programming skill set is really a power tool. Uh, and I can't emphasize that enough. So I'm basically telling you, take 300 regardless which concentration you pick. Um, cause that's the class that buttons up the programming stuff through something called data structures that really takes your programming to the next level, let's say. Uh, so that's the AI and robotics, uh, concentration. So you, uh, um, instead of taking systems programming, which is kind of like writing operating systems and, uh, programming language theory, which is writing programming languages, uh, and this theoretical computer science, which is kind of like, um, um, let's call it harder advanced problems in computer science. So things that aren't necessarily covered in our other classes, it's kind of a catch all, kind of the advanced theoretical things um, that maybe didn't quite fit into the other classes, we explore them in the 490 class. If you deviate from that, you can look at the AI robotics track where we have our traditional artificial intelligence class we have an advanced version of our artificial intelligence now. This is a new course. And then we have a machine learning and robotics course. This is also a new course. Um, so, you know, you would replace these three classes with these three classes in that concentration um, to have a, a focus towards AI and machine learning, which is heavily in demand in industry right now. So is software engineering. And by the way, you can do more than one concentration. So I'll swing back to that here in a second. Uh, cybersecurity also heavily, heavily, heavily in demand in industry. So if you wanna have maybe a little bit less of a day-to-day, -day, I'm a programmer job, but you wanna have more of, hey, I program some, but I really use a lot of existing tools to solve security type problems. That's where the cybersecurity concentration comes in. So the system integration class is really using existing computer systems. And then we have your traditional, um, security classes. So 426 is kind of an introduction uh, overview of cybersecurity from all facets. This is encryption, compression, things like that. Um, 440 is a network uh, class. 
So you learn about how computer networks work uh, in terms of you know, uh, the, the underlying you know, routing, switching, how TCP IP works, things like that, and with a focus on the security aspects of that. Uh, and then CSC 428, which is uh, a new class, uh, which is penetration testing. So this is more of like a, um, I don't know, how to be a hacker. Uh, so what's the difference between a penetration tester and a hacker? Um, sometimes penetration testers would be called white hat hackers. So they would be ethical hackers who get hired by companies to kind of stress test a company for how um, strong their, uh, their security is. And again, all of our, um, uh, our tech core requires an elective. So even if you uh, like one or two of these concentrations and you look, but you like a class from another concentration, you can take that as an elective and it'll still count. Um, and you have enough free electives to take really as many as you want uh, of the computer science classes. I would just say that uh, your best bet is to get two concentrations at least under your belt. You can easily do that. Um, and then if you're strategic, you can actually get three concentrations. Uh, and all three of those will show up on your transcript. So now you're applying to jobs with concentrations in software engineering, AI, robotics, and cybersecurity showing up on your transcript. That's gonna hopefully get you to the top of the stack uh, when you're applying for jobs. Um, next concentration is computer animation. So again, this is a pretty different uh, angle. So this is for the uh, more um, uh, I don't know, multimedia design type focus person that wants to use the power tools like Maya or uh, um, uh, 3D Studio Max. Uh, things like that to you know create three-dimensional um, uh, objects and also animate them. So that's the computer animation. Uh, but notice it shares some classes with cybersecurity. So those two are relatively compatible because this 180 class uh, is required for both. Similarly, software engineering and AI and robotics, the 300 class is required for both. So these are compatible, uh, complementary concentrations that you can take together and save a class. These are compatible, you can take together and save a class, and so is information systems in that. They both require the uh, 180. Also notice cybersecurity and information systems actually share two classes, 180 and 440, 180 and 440. Uh, actually, they share, this guy shares three classes. Uh, 426 is required in information systems as well. So, you know, you get kind of a hybrid uh, of the software engineering and the cybersecurity in this concentration. All right, so, uh, in any case, the new major requires only one of these concentrations. And then what you have left over is you have 21 free electives. I guess for this particular audience I'm talking to, you actually have 18 free elective credits because you burned three of those on 150. Um, so it's just the way it is. So you have 18 free electives for you, 21 free electives for everybody else that you can spend anywhere you want. You can go and take uh, law enforcement classes or English classes or sociology classes, psychology, whatever you want. If I had my druthers, I'd like you to take more computer science classes, but if you want to build kind of a hybrid -y type degree, you have the power to now do it with these 21 free electives. My encouragement to you is use these 21 free electives to take a second, at least a second concentration. And if you're strategic, especially if you start dabbling with like cybersecurity and information systems, you could fit a third concentration uh, into those credit hours or just take a couple of extra credits. You know, your tuition pays for 18 credits per semester, so it's not gonna cost you any more money. You just will take some classes that weren't required for graduation, but might be required for an additional concentration. Um, so in any case, there's a, for this particular audience, the folks that are currently in 200, uh, you have everything to gain and nothing to lose, basically, by um, moving to uh, uh, the, the new major. It's going to look better in your transcript. You have uh, a reduced, uh, I know, personally, I think you need more math than we had before, but several folks uh, maybe aren't huge math fans or don't see the point of math with computer programming, and there's some truth to that. So we really tried to focus the new major on this idea that uh, um, while some classes might be good from an education perspective, we want there to be, if we're gonna require a class, we want there to be a direct correlation. So for instance, calculus, 
great class. I'm a huge advocate of taking Calc 1, 2, and even 3. Um, I think those are great classes for problem solvers. I think it will help your computer science uh, uh, problem solving ability. But can you go and work in industry as a computer programmer, for example, without having calculus? And the answer is absolutely. You know, very rarely are you going to be on, on the job working at Acuity or even Google or Apple and being asked to do something with derivatives or integrals or something like that. You know, it'd be very, very, very project dependent uh, for that to be a thing. So with that in mind, we remove that requirement because it doesn't make sense. We can now encourage you to use, you know, some of, some of your free electives to do that or to choose to meet the core math requirement with calculus, but we're not forcing you to do it. So that gives you some additional flexibility. Similarly, uh, all of you have in your required major um, the cosmogony uh, class, which is the science of creation that Dr. Locklear teaches. It's a really, really, really cool class. Um, it kind of, you know, is where religion and uh, evolution uh, meet, you know, and they kind of talk about it through this uh, science perspective and, you know, they make arguments for both sides. Ultimately, you know, you're at Concordia. This is a Lutheran institution. Evolution is not going to be real popular. So you can kind of imagine what side it's probably going to come down on, but it does approach it from the scientific method uh, perspective. Um, it's a cool class. It's a thinker's type of class. It's not a Bible class. So that's where it differs from your theology requirements. I would be supportive of that class being required by Concordia, Concordia being a Lutheran school. But I'm not supportive of that class being a requirement for computer science because I could ask the question, can you go and be successful in a career in computer science without taking cosmogony? The answer is yes. With that in mind, I'm strongly encouraging you to consider the cosmogony class as your way of fulfilling the core requirement of human beings being human. I think that's the category it's in. That's the category where you have to take the bowling and the badminton and stuff like that classes and then three additional credit hours. That can be like a psychology course. I think philosophy counts or some law courses or you can take cosmogony. I would personally strongly encourage you to take cosmogony but I'm not going to require you to take it. So you're required in the old major, you're encouraged in the new major, but you can do what you want. You have that flexibility. Um, so I think there's a lot of good stuff in the new major that only benefits you. And the only trade-off you've made is you were forced into taking 150 um, when you could have completely avoided it if you were starting in the fall. So you're, you've lost three of these 21 credit hours. Now you're down to 18 free electives. The one other thing I'll throw in here, uh, and you are eligible for it now, if uh, we're, we're grandfathering people in, a couple of people have already taken advantage of it. Uh, we do have a scholars program where if you had a high school uh, GPA of 3.5 or better, and a 25 ACT or 1200 AC, uh, SAT or better, um, you qualify for our scholars program, which allows you to complete both the undergraduate and master's degree in computer science in four total years. Now, this does require you to take heavy loads. You're gonna be taking basically 18 credit hours every single semester and then also having to take, you know, probably a couple of summer and some winterim classes. So it is not an easy path, um, but it is available so you can pay your four year tuition and get a bachelor's and a master's. So if you meet the criteria for that, and you're willing to take heavy schedules and uh, maybe trade off a little bit of your social life, not all of it, you, we want the college experience to be there, but if you're willing to trade a little bit of that social life and focus more in academics, maybe the scholars program is for you and you, know, you save some money by getting a bachelor's and a master's all in four years um, and uh, um, you know, it, it, it's a good deal, let's, let's say that. Now, having said that, I'd also throw out there that all of you should be considering a master's degree in computer science. And the reason for that, and I'm gonna, I'll preface this again, I would prefer for you to come and do your master's at Concordia. Um, I already posted some stuff on Slack and I'll post this document up there as well. It's been posted before, but it kind of falls off the radar. I saw the chat message. 
Um, so I'll throw this out there. Again, I would love for you to come do your master's degree at uh, Concordia. Uh, in fact, our new master's program is kind of similar to the setup of this one, and it's all online. So you can go off after you finish your school and you uh, can completely finish it while you're working full time, stuff like that. But, you know, if I'm your dad, I'm probably still encouraging you to do a master's degree in computer science somewhere. If it's not at Concordia, if that's not where God's leading you, so be it. But do it somewhere. The issue today is that there is uh, so many people coming out with technology degrees that have such vast differences in skills depending on where their school uh, the schooling was which is why we're focusing our program in the areas that are most in demand uh, in industry that you really need something that will set you apart from somebody else that's in the stack of resumes and frankly master's degrees are the easiest degree for computer science folks um, and the quickest so they're not that expensive um, my hardest degree was the undergrad the degree you're working on right now was by far my hardest degree because you're taking all these classes you aren't necessarily interested in. By far the easiest was the master's degree because they're all computer science classes and by the time you're done, you're gonna be pretty good at computer science and you're gonna like computer science classes so they're gonna make a lot of sense to you even though right now I know they're pretty time consuming and maybe not the most fun but I promise you it'll be worth it in the end. Um, but uh, uh, the master's degree has a pretty huge trajectory for um, maximum salary. Money is not everything, but it's something. Um, but it might also get you the job interview a little quicker if you don't have an in with the company, either through a letter of recommendation or a direct connection with a faculty member or uh, a parent or something, somebody like that. Um, uh, so that's the, that's the scoop there. So I mean, I'm strongly encouraging you to do a master's degree somewhere. I'd like for you to do it at Concordia because I'd like to sell our program. Uh, but at the end of the day, I get paid either way. Uh, and I want you to be where it's a best fit for you. Uh, that's our program, great. If it's not, do it somewhere is what my, I'm, I'm encouraging you to do. Our ploy here would be this, that we do have an early start program. Even if you don't do the scholars program, you can get a couple of classes out of the way in the master's program while you're still an undergrad. You can't double dip, they won't count towards your undergrad program, but you have enough um, available credits, um, you know, uh, in your 18 credits you're already paying for in the undergrad to kind of get a jump start on the master's and then be able to finish it in one year, uh, and so in two semesters following your uh, undergrad. Um, or you can stretch it out farther if you wanna kind of go at it at a slower pace while you're working full time or something like that, but you do have the ability to start the program early if you're one of our current students. Um, let's see. Uh, more than likely, none of the classes you're looking at on this sheet that I have up on the screen will be offered in the summer officially. Uh, there are opportunities to take classes as independent studies um, over the summer if the faculty member agrees. We try to move, we try to not do that because then it hurts the numbers in the class when it's offered in the fall or in the spring, but we will do that if the difference is whether or not you get to graduate on time or not. So if you need a class to graduate on time, we'll make sure you can get the class. Um, or we'll give you the opportunity to replace the class with something else, but we deal with that on a case-by-case -case basis and we're very reasonable. So you'll be able to get the classes that you need but officially computer science typically does not run classes uh, in the summer as a normal class. Similarly, we don't run winter -room classes, so we're strictly fall, spring uh, classes. Um, cost to invest in the masters, I'm not sure exactly what the cost per credit hour is. Uh, it's a little bit higher than the cost per credit hour for undergraduate. I think undergraduate might be in like the $600 range per credit, maybe master's in the, is in the $700 range per credit, but because there's so fewer credits, um, the cost of the degree is less. Uh, another thing you can sometimes run into, given the, like you guys heard Acuity um, speak uh, earlier, uh, uh, actually they were last semester, so hopefully several of you saw the Acuity speaker, but some of our top students tend to go and work at Acuity, they pay for a master's program. so our students are getting 100% reimbursed. They have to pay for the class up front. Then once they 
finish the class and get a B or better, Acuity reimburses them 100% for it, and that's not necessarily uncommon. Uh, yeah, so Emily just posted 740 per credit hour. Um, typically, students complete the internship in like their junior year, but it's not uncommon to do it as a sophomore or as a senior. Basically, I'm saying, look, everybody should do an internship anyways. Before you didn't, you weren't required to do it. We'll give you college credit for it. Now it's part of the program. So um, almost all internships turn into full-time gigs uh, after the fact, unless it just didn't work out between you and the, the person. But a successful internship almost always turns into a job offer. But I would say, you know, common time for internships would be uh, maybe the summer between your sophomore and junior year. That's probably a, uh, um, a thing. Uh, some students do it during the school year as well. But um, uh, let's see, do you have to get the intern? Oh, yeah, I just answered that. Yeah, it doesn't have to be through the during the school year. So it's very common for you because the uh, 400 class, the internship class, is not a class that meets. So we offer it every semester. You'll be able to enroll in it, uh, including the summer, uh, to meet that requirement. And um, uh, sometimes what will, what will happen though is students will do the internship over the summer, but enroll in it in the fall. So it's covered under their fall and spring tuition. Um, and they, you know, they've already done the work, they just get the credit in the fall semester, something like that. Um, let's see, what if you get a full-time job with a company without an internship? So basically you're saying, what if you have a full-time job with the place you're gonna work for and uh, that doesn't, uh, it's not officially an internship. I suppose we can count that as your internship if you're already working for them. You just happen to be getting paid better, uh, <laughs> more than likely. Uh, but if, you, if you're asking if you have a full-time job offer from a place, does that mean you don't have to take an internship? Um, I would say, no, it doesn't mean that. You would still have to do an internship or work for that company while you're still in school to get the, um, the internship credit. Uh, but in that situation, we would probably let you swap the internship out with another class since you've already gotten a, a job. So we'd make it work one way or another. Um, but officially, you do have to get the internship credit. Uh, one way or another, <laughs> you got to get you got to get the credit, um, and there's going to be different ways we can probably accomplish that. But okay, so I think that is the general punchline. Let me show you one additional thing. I put it up on Slack here. Uh, I put it in the 200 channel. Let me drag that down here. So these are the courses that you can expect to be offered in the fall and the spring every year. Uh, they're color coded based on the faculty member who's teaching it. So uh, um, I guess I'm, I'm the light blue. Uh, I teach a lot in our grad program. So you only get the hard classes with me. Uh, <laughs> um, but in any case, uh, so next fall, notice that usually 250 is in the spring and it will be in the spring for the students who are taking 200 in the fall but we have a section of 250 this coming fall um, for you uh, because that's the next class in your sequence similarly there'll be a section of 300 in the spring for you because that's when it will fall in your sequence but otherwise this is the normal cadence of classes in the fall and the spring so using this as my starting point, all of you should be enrolled in the fall in CSC 250. I know it's in the spring column here, but there's a, a section of it in the fall. So you should be in CSC 250 this coming fall. That's the course that this class leads right into. You should also, um, well, you don't have to, but I would recommend you take an additional course. The course I'd recommend you take that will count as either an elective or if you're looking at the cybersecurity concentration um, is CSC 428. You can take CSC 428 while you're concurrently enrolled in 250. This is that class that is the, uh, it's called penetration testing that is kind of the ethical hacking class. Uh, Dr. Wall teaches it. It's the first time we're offering the class and it looks really cool. 
So uh, I would strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to take 428 this coming fall. Um, that will directly benefit you if you're doing the cybersecurity concentration. It'll indirectly benefit you regardless because it'll count as a CS elective, which you have to take as part of the tech core anyways. Okay, so that's the course I would push for this coming fall. The other course that you can take that um, uh, you would be qualified for uh, is also 420, which is human computer interaction. Um, you could take all three of those. I don't think that would be too horrible of a load. Uh, 420 is a less technical class. It's about, uh, this is user experience. Um, so uh, it's, it's not a design making things look pretty class. It's a design making things function properly for humans interfacing with a computer class. All right, so if you wanted to fill up your schedule in the, uh, the fall and you're currently a 200 student, I would say take 250, which will be there. It is there for the fall right now for you. Take 420 and 428. If I were you and you only wanted to take two of those, well, you have to take 250. I would also then take 428 if I were you. I think it sounds like a cool class. But those are the three classes that you would be qualified uh, to take in the, um, uh, the fall. I guess there's a fourth class in here, 210. This is the first animation class. So if you're interested in computer animation and want to get a taste of it, this will count as a CS elective. So it won't hurt you any way you cut it. Uh, and it might be the start of your path down computer animation. So those are the four classes offered next semester that you'd be qualified for. You are not qualified to take 370 yet. Uh, 370 you take, uh, at, it requires CSC 250. Uh, so it requires two semesters of programming. So uh, even if it let you uh, enroll in that, that class is gonna be rough if you haven't had uh, 250. So um, I would rethink that if that's the direction you've currently gone. Uh, similarly, the Science 275, that's the Cosmogony class. Again, we don't require that for computer science any longer, but that will meet the uh, human beings being human uh, uh, core requirement. And uh, we strongly recommend you take that class, but we're not requiring you to meet that requirement with that class. So that's also offered in the fall. So lots of, lots of classes you are qualified to take in the fall. Um, you have to take 250. So if you're not enrolled in that, you need to be enrolled in that because that'll throw you off uh, if you're not. Um, then I would say the pecking order would be 428, uh, 420. Um, well, after 428, if you're interested in art, do the 210 class animation one, um, or animation, 3D animation if you're interested in that. Uh, as well as consider the Science 275 Cosmogony class. Uh, it's perfectly reasonable. If, you're, if your plan was to get through a bunch of gen eds in the fall and spring, which is common. So, I mean, it's fairly common for you not to have a heavy computer science load as a sophomore. Um, so, if, so you do not have to take 428. You don't have to take 210. Um, or 275. The only class you have to take next semester as a computer science major is 250. If you're not in that class, you need to be in that class because you'll throw off your, uh, your schedule if you're not. So you need to be in the, the programming class. I think 419 would be pretty rough. Um, you know, you can talk to Professor Locklear and see if he'll let you in, but I think 419, which is the machine learning class, is going to be very, very, very programming centric. Um, I think you will get more out of that class the, uh, if you take it the following fall, if you're going the, uh, the AI route. Um, I'd love to tell you, I'd love to get people in that class. You know, I have a concern that that class might be relatively low enrolled next semester, but I also don't want to, I want to set you up to succeed. And I just think 419 could be rough. If you think you're a, uh, um, experienced programmer where this class was kind of a formality for you and you feel like you know maybe you already have a 250 skill set let's say um, reach out to me we can maybe talk to professor Locklear to see if he would entertain it he probably would he probably would let you into the class is my gut feeling I don't want to promise that but he probably would 
I'm just personally encouraging you to don't set yourself up to struggle. Um, Cause I think that's going to be a really cool class and very, very, very related to a career. If you uh, um, want to get into uh, artificial intelligence and I think your best bet is to do that class when you have the right skills under your belt. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm just, I'm hitting these in order. Uh, we're burning all the class time, but that's okay. This is important stuff. Um, just learn a little bit about the internship. Will the work for the summer? Are these specific employers? Uh, no, uh, internship is very open ended. Um, you know, a lot of our students get internships with the places that we bring folks in for tech tech talks, but uh, several students go and do internships back home with companies uh, they have found. Uh, there isn't like a required thing. It's very loose as long as you're um, doing some work that gets you real life experience that's at least loosely related, hopefully more than loosely related to your degree program, that'll count. Um, so very flexible, but we want you to have real industry experience, not just classroom experience. Um, but one way or another, it can work out. Um, let's see. What if we're planning? Okay, I already answered that, the gen eds. Uh, what about the spring? Require classes for the spring for you will be CSC 300. So again, I know it shows in the fall on this uh, list and we will offer it this fall, but there'll be a, an extra version of it for the spring to let you finish your programming sequence. So if you are doing the concentration, uh, let me switch back over to, if you're doing the concentration in software engineering, or AI and robotics, CS300 is required. You will take that in the spring, this coming spring. I'm personally encouraging you to take that class regardless. I think computer programming never hurts you. I know some of you have somewhat of a love-hate relationship with it right now. Some of you have a hate-hate relationship with it right now. Stick the course, it'll eventually become fun, I promise you. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough. It's, it's the skill that all computer scientists use to solve problems and eventually it'll click. And that's when you will start having a lot of fun with your career and that's when you get that superpower that will allow you to go out and do some really cool things in industry. And again, make a lot of money. That's the skill that pays. Um, so if you're doing software engineering or AI and robotics, you're required to take 300. You will take that this coming spring. All right. Um, I encourage all of you to take it this coming spring. So I would, if I'm you and I want to get the most out of my computer science degree, I go ahead and mark down that I need to take 300 in the uh, um, spring of uh, 2021. Uh, let's see, what else then would you take in the, let me get the other screen back up. Uh, I think isn't 325, yes. Yeah. So I would take CSC 325 in the spring. That's required in the tech core. So all of you have that as a requirement if you switch to the new major. Even if it wasn't required, I'd heavily uh, suggest you take that. That's computer organization. Um, uh, so you learn assembly language, so low level code in there. If you remember us looking at uh, uh, first couple weeks of class, like the Hello World program written in Linux assembly, you know, we learned how to write the stuff in there. And we worked a lot with uh, uh, how computers actually work under the hood with like the CPU and hardware registers and how that interacts with system memory and uh, how memory actually works, things like that. So it's a, it's a hardware class, but it's a theoretical uh, how computers actually are put together under the hood uh, type class with the programming slant of a low level language that being a language that has a one-to-one -one relationship with the CPU, uh, we do um, uh, assembly language in there. So um, half programming, half hardware, let's say that class, but you will take that class in the spring. All of you should be planning on taking that in the spring. Um, similarly, uh, if you are doing one of the concentrations, cybersecurity, computer animation, or information systems, you're required to take 180. With that in mind, I would take 180 in the spring. That's this class right here. Um, now, uh, having said that, 
the uh, that particular class is uh, um, if you're not doing one of those three concentrations, I would not recommend you take 180. Not that it's a bad class, I just don't think it's a that I don't think it's worth spending a uh, um, a class on unless you're going to do one of those concentrations. And frankly, I'd highly encourage you to focus. If I was picking the three poster boy concentrations, I would look at software engineering, AI and robotics, and cybersecurity. I don't want to devalue the other two, but animation is going to be a very different concentration that's going to benefit you in certain types of jobs and not help you at all in other ones. Um, and then information systems is the new version of, computer, uh, is of IT, which is going to be much more of a hardware type thing. Um, again, Nothing wrong with it, but it will translate into lower paying jobs. Um, but maybe you love it. Again, money is not everything, right? It won't translate into low paying jobs, just lower paying jobs than jobs in software engineering, cybersecurity, and AI. Um, you'll still be paid well, <laughs> is, is the punchline. Um, so, but if you're going to do one of those three concentrations, you might as well get 180 uh, out of the way in the spring as well. So uh, I would say um, if you're looking at the computer animation uh, concentration, you could actually start that this coming fall with 210 and you can continue it with animation two in uh, the spring with 315, if that's of interest to you. Um, I don't want you to discount that because I mean, you might do maybe software engineering and AI and robotics, and then you might choose to also do animation or at least take the animation classes. Dr. Wall's really gifted in computer animation, and I think that is uh, a worthwhile uh, class, a worthwhile uh, path to take to get you a skill that maybe a lot of computer computer science folks don't have. Um, not my cup of tea, but I'm not that artistic. Um, I kind of sometimes wish I was. Uh, so uh, if I had the the innate talent, uh, I think those would be classes I'd like to take myself. But if we're talking your go-to move, my recommendation for you to take in the, uh, the spring would be all of you should be taking uh, 325. Let's call that a requirement. That's in the tech core. So everybody in this that I'm talking to right now should be taking CSC 325. Um, I strongly encourage you to take CSC 300. there'll be a version of 300 in the spring specifically for this group, even though it's offered in the fall, typically. So it'll be offered both semesters this uh, coming year. So I'd highly encourage you to take 300 and it's already up there in the schedule. I think you can enroll at it now. Um, I would consider 180 if you're doing one of those uh, cybersecurity animation or information systems uh, uh, concentrations. You could also take 350. This is the first operating systems class. You would be prepared for that one. And, you know, if you had the room in your schedule, you can get that out of the way. So this kind of uh, um, goes to Jonathan's question. If you were planning on getting a lot of your gen eds out of the way next fall and next spring, you might take fewer total computer science classes, but you can rely on this schedule being offered every fall and every spring. So anything you don't take next fall or next spring, you'll take the following fall and spring, for example. But classes you have to take next year will be CSC 250 in the fall, CSC 325 in the spring, and I'm strongly encouraging you to take the 300 in the spring as well. Um, you don't want to take time off of programming. You know, you want to take the three programming sequence back to back to back. Um, so if you want that extra programming class, the time to do it is right after you've had 250. All right, let me scroll down here. Where would I be all right to take 430? Um, I think 430 would be okay. Uh, in the fall, um, we probably would want to talk to uh, Dr. Wall about it. Um, I think you'd have a much better chance of success in 430 than in 419. Earlier we were talking about the AI and robotics class. So 
realistically, I think 419 or 430 is possible, but I think 428 is the better fit. Um, we can certainly, in the IT minor, swap those two, since 428 is a new class. Um, uh, because notice, going back to the new computer science major, a minor is not even required. So if you, uh, I know some of you are actually minors in computer science or IT, and your major is something else. So I, I, I get that. So that's not the audience I'm talking to this very second. But uh, in our new major, we don't require you to have a minor. So these free electives cover a minor, but you get to build your own whatever. More concentrations, take a hodgepodge of classes that you're just interested in, you know, whatever that ends up meaning for you. Um, but I would think that if you are really interested in computer database in the fall, uh, we could talk to Dr. Wall and see if he's okay with it. But if it's for an IT minor, I would encourage you maybe to take the penetration testing class instead of that, and we can swap those two requirements. Um, but think about it. If you're more interested in database -y stuff, which is in the IT world, than you are in security um, hacking type stuff, then you know, I don't want to force you into a security class when you're more interested in the database. So uh, we can see what we can, we can work out there. So maybe message, message me off, uh, off uh, line and we'll figure that out. Uh, uh, there is, uh, for paperwork uh, for the internship, it's like you know uh, a little like one page paper you write at the end of it that you have your supervisor sign um, kind of describing what you did in there that allows us to have like a documentation that says you uh, um, this is what you did on there and it's least loosely related to your degree program. So not heavy paperwork, just a, a relatively informal thing. Uh, so far classes, is it after 250 that our curriculum syncs up with the, uh, yeah, I think for you, after 250, it syncs up with the other ones because 300 is not required for everybody. Um, certainly after 300, then you'll be completely synced because we won't have to do any more of those one-offs. Because um, all of you will need to have 370. Um, the follow, let's see, where's 370 in here? the following fall, um, regardless. But actually, we're offering a 370 in the spring. So I'm actually missing a class here that I should have told you about. CSC 370, all of you should be taking next spring. So if I had, if it, if I had to pick two classes that you're required to take in the spring, it's 325 and 370. The prerequisite for 370 is 250 all CS majors have to take 370, whether you're in the current major or the new major. 325 is required in the current major for all CS majors, is the, required in the new major for all CS people. So my strong encouragement would be take 325 and 370 in the spring. That's more than a strong encouragement. That's basically a requirement. And then um, if you're a, Software engineering or AI and robotics concentration person, take 300. If you're a uh, cybersecurity animation or information systems uh, concentration, take 180. But I'd still encourage everybody to take 300. So if that's that programming class, just take it. It's, uh, if you can fit it in your schedule, take it. It's, it's just an important class. Um, but if we just had to pick required courses, 325 and 370 is what you should take in the spring. So the reason 370 is not on this list is we will typically offer it in the fall because the new way order people take classes, you'll take 200 in the fall, 250 in the spring, and then 300 in the fall along with 370. But you're off a semester, so we'll be offering 370 in the spring. Uh, would 300 and 370 be fine to take during the same semester? Yeah, in fact, it's common. 300 and 370 are almost always taken concurrently. 
they, they are related to each other in that 370 is software engineering. It's how do you work on bigger software projects from an organizational perspective? 300 tends to be bigger software projects. Um, the second part, should we take 325 and 300 and maybe 300, 370 in the spring? I would say you should take 325 and definitely 370 in the spring. I encourage you to take 300 strongly in the spring. But the classes you definitely want to get out of the way are 325 and 370 in the spring. Yep. So Jonathan, that you were accurately advised. Uh, in the spring, three, if you're a CS major, 300 was required and 370 is required in the current major. So you would take both of those in the spring. I'm encouraging you to take both of those anyways, because they're required in the new major if you're doing software engineering or AI and robotics anyways for 300 and 370 is required for everybody. Uh, no, you do not need to take uh, 180 before you take CSC 210. The animation classes stand on their own. So you can take those classes. I mean, you should take animation one before you take animation two, but otherwise they stand their own. Um, and I know class is over, so if you take off, feel free. I'll keep the recording going until I answered all the questions. But uh, so I guess no new homework <laughs> for, for Wednesday. Um, sorry, we burned the whole class time, but I think this is valuable since we're making the transition. So we'll uh, circle back on Wednesday and pick up, but uh, I'm, I'm going to keep going here and we'll keep it on the recording if you need to watch it later. Uh, yes, Jonathan, 325 and 300. I'm sorry, no. 325 and 370 should be what you're taking in the indefinitely. If mm -hmm. Currently a CS major, not an IT major, you should also then take 300. Okay, so I just think I should just juggle my schedule, schedule around a little bit just to yeah, maybe, maybe push off a gen ed or something. Yeah, that was the point of this, uh, of this conversation, um, mm. is to make sure everybody was in line with what they needed to do as we transition to this. So, um, because 370 is required regardless, and while you're already in the programming mode, you should get 370 out of the way. Take 300 as well because 300 you want to take right after you had 250 they feed into each other and then 325 technically is not required for your current major so if you don't switch to our new major you don't even have to take 325 but, i was planning on switching over right i mean hopefully what i did today is i made the argument that it, it only makes sense to switch over there's the, it benefits you in so many different ways um so uh let's see but if we want 300, we should take it. Yes, if you want 300, take it the semester after 250. It's not 100% required, you can take it later, but I'm telling you, you wanna take it while everything's still fresh in your mind. You wanna keep going. Um, 300, 325, 350, and 375, or 370 uh, can be done in one semester. Yeah, I do. Um, 300 is a programming class is going to be quite a bit of work. Um, 370 will be a lot of work, but less work. 325 will again also be less work. 350 will be less work. So I think your heavy class that semester will be the 300 class, uh, with the other ones not being easy classes, but any stretch of the imagination, but being, you know, less time consuming. I think you can do all four of them, 300, 325, 350, and 370 in the spring. Um, let's see. Yeah, the reason she didn't say anything about 325 is it's not, uh, Jonathan, is that it's not uh, required in your major. It's required in the new uh, major, the new uh, tech core. So it's uh, right here in the tech core of the new major. No matter which concentration you take, you all have to take that class. Um, CSC 180 is required for cybersecurity, computer animation, and information systems. It's required for those concentrations. I would not recommend you take that class if you're doing software engineering or AI and robotic concentrations. I don't, I think there's better electives to take. Not that it's a bad class. I just, you know, 
all things being equal, I would only take that if you're going to use one of these um, concentrations. Um, but cybersecurity is a pretty appealing concentration from a money-making perspective, in my opinion. So um, with that in mind, you might say, I have to take 180 because I want to take the cybersecurity classes. So for cybersecurity, you could take 428 uh, this coming fall, then you could take 426 in the spring, which is the first security class. Um, so you could actually have half of the concentration done by the end of your sophomore year. And actually, you could knock out 180 uh, in there as well. But at some point, you're you know stacking up too many computer science classes at once where you'll drive yourself insane. So some of these classes you might want to put off, but you know. One, in, that, in that sense, with stacking up too many computer science classes, would you recommend them better to actually spread out our gen eds a little bit more to get a little bit more variety later on? Or um, I guess I don't necessarily have an opinion. I mean, my my feeling is is uh, from an academic perspective, if you're a driven person, as many computer science classes as you can take at once that you know are in your wheelhouse, do it because uh, there's always going to be room for the gen eds later. Mm -hmm. um so um, yeah but you also have to consider your own sanity and you know how you know how you work in classes some people can do 18 credits and it's easy for them other people 15 credits is a stretch so you have to just know thyself uh type thing um let's see uh technically uh you can switch over whenever uh you could just start taking the classes in the right order now um, you just work with your advisor to officially change your catalog gear to the new one. Um, but mm -hmm. you, you don't have to uh, be switched over officially until you go to graduate <laughs> and, and actually start, you know, you want to get these concentrations on your, uh, um, uh, your transcript. Yeah, I totally agree, James. Three concentrations, I think, are completely legit. Um, if I were choosing three, and again, this is the Mike Lippman version, I'm effectively as pure computer science as you can get. Computer animation, I'm just going to look at it as being out of my wheelhouse. Information systems, not of interest to me. Um, I, I'm, I'm interested in networks and things like that, or you know, I, I, I hobby and do those things, but... If I'm looking at it purely from an academic perspective and I'm doing three concentrations, I figure out how to do software engineering, AI and robotics and cybersecurity. The alternative approach to that is I would also be heavily, heavily interested in the uh, early start master's program. And if I had to let a fall guy happen because I'm so programming centric, I would do software engineering and AI and robotics as my official concentrations. I would maybe take a couple of the cybersecurity classes as part of my electives because um, I wouldn't necessarily put that much value in the 180 class personally. Uh, and then I would focus on finding where I can fit those uh, couple of grad classes in as this, my senior year to get a jump start on the, on the master's program. Because obviously software engineering, AI and robotics are very compatible concentrations and I think they're going to, they're going to, pay big bucks uh, once you're in industry. And if you're more on the IT side of things, cybersecurity is where your big bucks are. I mean, the, the, the value on the market difference, and again, I wanna emphasize money's not everything. I don't wanna make this a money game, but it, it's something you do wanna consider. The amount you'll make in cybersecurity compared to information systems will be astronomical. It'll probably be double. Um, and, and then some, as you continue to mature in cybersecurity, it's, it's just going to be such a big part. Well, it's a big part of our world today. It's going to be such a huge part of our future. So is AI and robotics and software engineering is not going anywhere because it's the glue that puts all of these together. Um, okay. Uh, any other questions? Oh, saw, there was a comment I saw in the chat about one of the, I think it was 250 being full in the fall or something. Um, oh, uh, send me a, uh, a message, Nick. Uh, if you're not able to get into it, we'll, we'll, I'll get you into it. It's probably, I think our default classes are, uh, 
set up to have maybe you'll have a maximum of like 30 students or something. And because we obviously have more than 200, um, it, it won't be a problem. I'll let you into the class. So okay, uh, I, th I think it was uh, 20 people in the class. Okay, it might be. I think maybe when they got added, they forgot to change the number because we did change that. That we used to have a smaller cap. Um, but basically, just let's say this is off the record. But I've been at Concordia for uh, this is finishing up my 15th year. I've been teaching for 20 years. I have never seen in computer science um, a student who wanted to get into a class not allowed into the class. We 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 find a way to get your your butt in a seat somewhere. <laughs> so uh um don't stress about that for computer science classes just reach out to me we'll we'll get you in there you know officially we check with the well i'm the 250 faculty member but officially we check with a faculty member to make sure they're cool with it but i like i said i've been here longer than everybody except for dr locklear and i've never seen a no come out of a you know we're very student-centric so we'll that won't be a problem you'll be fine uh, did I miss anything else? Anybody else help me? Uh, I appreciate it, James. Yeah, I, I I had so many questions over the weekend as people were scrambling to uh, um, uh, register, and uh, um, you know the the reality is is even though we blew a, a class time, it it really impacts this particular group the most. Mm -hmm. so you're the group that's off by a semester um, that we're catching you up next year but it, it it impacts you but also benefits you the most because you're able to take advantage of the new major and its perks as opposed to uh maybe if you're a junior right now it might be tough to to make it fit um especially since we have a couple of new classes that uh, that are in there but it might be possible for a junior but it's it's definitely something all of you should do is switch to the new major. So I wanted to make sure everything was clear to everybody. And hopefully you see that there's plenty of time to take the classes. You're gonna be figuring out which mm -hmm. classes not to take. Um, so. so then you're, so then I probably should like drop one of my jet eds in the, in the spring and take 325 instead. That would be my take on it. But again, you know, uh, that mm -hmm. 3. 325 will be offered again the following spring. Um, and if I'm being honest, does taking 325 a year later hold you back from anything? Realistically, probably not. Although I really think the knowledge in 325 is foundational to computer science as a whole. So having that found that foundation might help you understand some concepts in other classes, but it won't be directly used in other classes. So, um, so it's basically a good idea to take it. That would be my opinion. But you're not killing yourself if you wait a year to take 325. I mean, I think I can, pushing back a gen ed should be easier than. Correct. That's my feeling. You would be killing yourself if you waited a year to take 300. And you would be killing yourself if you waited a year to take 370. Okay. Those would be detrimental to wait for those. Whereas uh, the 325 would be. Uh, yeah, I'll just drop one of my electives and take it later. Flesh wound. Or, I'm electives okay. of my gen eds and take it later. Sure. Um, but again, I really want to do, I do want to emphasize that everybody needs to know thyself and know what they can handle. So if they feel like their computer science homework, maybe don't measure the 200 class. Cause I, you know, truth in advertising, I told you day one, this class was going to feel like a lot of work, right? You know, it just, it's just the nature of programming, but eventually it'll get better and it will be fun for you. But, uh, you know, know thyself. And if you know, you get overwhelmed easily, then purposely spread out your CS classes a little bit more so that you can do well in them and not be overwhelmed where you take four classes at once and, you know, do poorly in all of them because you just, you bit off more than you can chew. So, you know, it's easy for me to sit here and say that, you know, Hey, take seven computer science classes at once and just pay for the extra credits, but you gotta, you know, operate within reality as well. All right. Anything else? You mentioned that we had academic advisors. Do we have one within the department, within the CS department? Yeah, you will. So, um, uh, so I, for now, I can be that person. Um, what ends up happening, the, the way it works, is for the first two years, you are uh, dealing with a, uh, a traditional academic advisor who has knowledge of, like, you know, the, the entire program with the core, the core classes, and things like that. 
Uh, so most of you guys probably Dana, it's my guess. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, then after you, when you start your junior year, you're then assigned to a faculty member and you can switch faculty members. You know, basically none of us look at who our assigned uh, advisees are. You just email somebody who you like working with and you go and talk to them. Um, because we know about the computer science constant major. We're not going to be uh, overly trustworthy when it comes to asking something specifically about a core class. Uh, you know, nine times out of 10, I'm probably going to tell you to confirm with Dana for those. But for the CS classes, when you really get deep into the majors as a junior, um, that's when you would switch to us. But you could certainly work with us right now. Um, but don't rely on us for things related to the core rely on us for things related to specifically the CS major. All right, anything else? Is there any homework due on Wednesday? No, I'll look and see if there was something up there. I'll shift it around because we didn't do anything today other than oh, talk about um, So if, if there's something listed right now, I'll shift it. Uh, otherwise, um, I guess, didn't I say you could have more time to get your previous assignment due for today? I don't think you mentioned that. Okay, well. I, I did actually have a question. Um, sure. Is there a way to assign a object to a ver to the, to the ident like, because I'm trying to like make objects in a loop and give yep. them each unique names. Is there a way to do that or is that just not feasible? Well, you can do it, you can add them to a dictionary where, you know, they would have a unique name in a dictionary. So, you know, you would have object one is this value, object two is this value, object three. Like, when you do that with a variable, you pull like the one variable out, like let's say R1. Yeah. And then you, you, you can assign the, the like what the variable is holding as the, the name of the. Yeah, that's how dictionaries work. Okay. So you, you would have in the dictionary, you would have bucket R1 would be equal to the instance of the room object that is R1. So it'd be a pointer, it'd be a memory addressy looking thing. Okay, so I might be doing my thing slightly wrong. I'll just need to go through and reevaluate it for dictionaries. But, but what I'll do um, is I'll go ahead and whatever homework was due on Friday, I, I kind of recall saying that you can work on it over the weekend. I'll just shift that to Wednesday. So whenever you've turned it in, it won't show up as being late. And then we'll regroup and start doing stuff on Wednesday. So if you're still working on the previous assignment or you're not happy with this current state, you can continue to patch that up for Wednesday and I'll just shift it so it won't show up as being turned in late. Yeah, I might need to like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just getting kind of stuck where I'm at. Maybe I'll just talk to you later and we can figure that out. Sure. But yeah, the, the, to do what you want to do, you use a dictionary. Dictionaries are collections of name value pairs. Mm -hmm. You can name it R1 and the value can be an object. You can name it R2, the value can be an object. Okay, I'll look into that. Okay. Thank you. All right, have a good one.